A red, white, and blue logo depicts three children in profile. Children's Bureau, Building Community, Building Hope, Community Parenting Sentencing Alternative, Washington State. A corrections officer speaks to a mother and son in their home. So you guys are reading 20 minutes? Hey yeah. 20 minutes a day? Yeah, at you. least. Jackson, what's your favorite book? She points to a picture. Is this a frog? Jackson moves her hand. Oh. Department of Corrections, Amanda speaking. Amanda Lee is Community Corrections program. Officer. As kind of a half law enforcement, half social worker, as a traditional community corrections officer, my interactions with families would be limited. You're not there to build the support with the family first. You're there to work with the offender first. In this program, we reverse that, and we work within the family and in their house first, because if that's not going well, they're not going to succeed when they get out. A woman walks in. Kathy Burke, early head start. Hi, Jackson. Jackson stirs a bowl of batter. Now you want to touch it? He pokes his finger in. We watch our children's faces a lot to see <laughs> you know, if this is okay or not. <laughs> Our relationship with the Department of Early Learning, honestly, it was like peanut butter and jelly. Susie Lavelle, really Program fit. Administrator, we Department of Corrections. Impassioned idea around, wow, you guys have all these great skills and all these great opportunities to engage kids. Oh, more, and we have this population where we know that there's difficulty in engaging with kids for our parents. So how can we come together and start working together? The parenting sentencing alternative law was born out of a prison reduction idea. If we could transfer low risk or nonviolent offenders out of prison using electronic monitoring in order to be home with their kids, then we could save state dollars by reducing the inmate population and holding only those that we really need to be holding in prison. Our team at the Department of Early Learning was invited to do some training with the staff that work in this program to Judy share King, Strengthening what we Families know Administrator, about Department of Early Learning, and how those protective factors help children and families thrive. What color is that? Pink. Kathy Burke. So he's done some amazing work. He's got some wonderful words. The mother. When I first got home. He had hardly talked at all. He didn't say, he would say juice, or he would say, you know, he was, he didn't, and so I started working with him with his sentences and his words. Susie it was really Lebel. important that we developed partners that helped us understand the needs of families and children, because clearly, as an adult Department of Corrections agency, our expertise was not children. So I invited Department of Early Learning and other agencies to come and participate on our screening committee for us to understand a little bit more about the Strengthening Families model. As this program has grown and evolved, we've seen the protective factors become so integral Judy King. and connected to the work that it's been become part of the operating system. She started incarceration in 2009. A team that, meeting. That she was clean those few years she was out shows her resiliency. Mm -hmm. So I heard you talk about resiliency. Are there other protective factors that we can identify with this particular mom? Well, that she's maintained a relationship with her kids. Mm -hmm. I think that's really positive. She <laughs> participated in Partners in Parenting. In prison, if we could have her do that again in the community, when she's got access to the children, it makes a huge difference. I think she's a good candidate for this program. Under gray skies, a ferry sits docked at a pier. I got arrested five days before my kids' sixth birthday. They're nine years old now. The ferry sails in open waters. I wasn't able to be a parent. I mean, I was just so low. Not being able to see my kids having to call on the phone and having to ask, you know, oh, is this Brianna or is this Michaela? Jennifer. There shouldn't ever be a point in my life where I don't know whose voice I am here. Two blonde girls smile I, in a photo. I wasn't able to put my children first. Susie Lavelle. We know that roughly 80% of offenders have children. 2.7 to 3 million children in the United States have an incarcerated parent under the jurisdiction of the Department of Corrections. Judy King. It's important for us to think carefully about this population of children because we know they've experienced trauma. Susie Lavelle. Kids are at higher risk for isolation, feelings and experiences of shame, drug abuse, mental illness, truancy, and involvement in the criminal justice system. Blonde Judy King. The benefits of this program is that children who may have been invisible to us prior to this time are now in the light and it gives us an opportunity to ensure that those kids can get connected to the services and supports that they really need. So what we want to do is really create opportunities in this alternative for offenders to become present parents. Susie Lavelle. Clean and sober first, 
and your learning skills and abilities in order to put your kids first in your daily life. Jennifer Just reads with her daughters. Came through the hedge. Judy King. I think it's powerful if you've been incarcerated for three years and you see yourself as an offender to be with your family and seeing yourself as a parent first and foremost to help the parent build that time with the child, doing things they enjoy together, establishing routines, finding the kinds of things that will reconnect them in ways that supports that child's development. Jennifer Cooks with her daughters, what Susie Levell. Every hour of the day has something to do with their kids. They must read with their kids for a minimum of 20 minutes a day, and they have to have dinner time without distraction of TV or electronics. They eat together. I think one of the biggest skills to learn as a parent is resilience. I might not have the best day today, but I can have a better day tomorrow. I'm going to make mistakes, but it's building the understanding, the skills to avoid the big problems. Brown haired Jennifer. Amanda, my corrections officer, has been really, really amazing. Whenever I was overwhelmed, I was able to talk to her. She immediately helped me find what I need. I'm not out there just looking for the mistakes. Amanda I'm out there Lee's. Giving them encouragement, but they also know that I'm an authority figure, that if they do mess up, that I will have to go down those other consequences. I don't feel like I'm failing now. I feel like I have a chance because Jess. she's been in my corner pushing me along in the right way. You know, and I'm not cutting any corners right now either. You know, that's a big deal. He swabs his cheek. Susie Lee Bell. that re-entering parents face are, are significant. There's this idea that, okay, mommy's home, everything's fine. And if you left when your child was four and you're returning and your child's nine, those are completely different developmental stages, complete different expectations. Judy King. The challenge that some families face is navigating roles when they re-enter the community. They may need to renegotiate things with a family member that has been the primary caretaker of their child. I get Jess and Amanda talk in his kitchen. Personally, because yeah. I'm not used to her acting out. I think you taking it slow, your dad and you both parenting at the same time right now, do the timeout stuff together. You gotta do the exact same things. Because if you're not doing the exact same things, she's gonna act out more and be on the same page. Like That's the main goal, is that your dad and you are on the same page of what you both want and she'll, her behavior will start to change. Dark hair Jess smiles. Elsewhere, Amanda sits at Jennifer's dining table. I'm gonna take your, uh, oh your dinner off. Crazy. Jennifer lifts her foot. <laughs> Spray tan, that's awesome. Amanda cuts off the monitor. So yesterday I got my bracelet cut off, which means that it is the end of my sentence. I am done with my time. An older, short-haired woman hugs Jennifer. Later, Jennifer lifts her bare ankle while posing between her two daughters. <laughs> she cuts a cake. Does it taste like freedom? It's freedom cake. The best cake ever. Later, she and her daughters play in a bedroom decorated with string lights. So there's been 301 participants who have completed the community parenting alternative. Our rate of success in terms of a return to prison rate, only 8% of the people who've participated and successfully completed our program have gone back to prison in five years. Susie Levell. The state average is 30% in a three-year period. We're saving money phenomenally around social costs, foster care costs, incarceration costs, but honestly, I think the bigger benefit is the maintaining of that parental bond. Jennifer Thumb wrestles one of her daughters. I think when offenders are successful parents, they stay out of prison. They stay engaged with their kids. When parents are engaged with their kids, we see healthy young adults. We saw in bringing our two systems together, the expertise and wisdom and passion around success coming from both places and wove that in a different way. Judy King. My hope for others in this great field of prevention is that you can look for those unlikely partners. Susie I'm Levelle. excited to think that we get to provide an opportunity for others to say, hey, it can be done and it can be done successfully and safely. I um, mean, for the benefit of kids, because really what this is all about is the best interests of children. I love you. Jennifer faces her daughter's bunk bed. I'll see you in the morning. She turns off the light. For more information and to share this film, go to the Child Abuse and Neglect Technical Assistance and Strategic Dissemination Center, www.cantasd.org. Special thanks to the Washington State Department of Corrections and the Washington State Department of Early Learning. This film was prepared under contract number HHSP 233-2014-0025C of the Office on Child Abuse and Neglect, Children's Bureau, Administration on Children, Youth and Families, Administration for Children and Families, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services by the National Child Abuse and Neglect Technical Assistance and Strategic Dissemination Center. The views expressed in this film are those of the people interviewed and do not represent official views or policies of any part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. For more information, visit www.cantasd.org. Administration for Children and Families.